Focus! So here's a guy who puts a video up at the end of 2017, sets some kind of crazy target for 2018 about doing 12 videos in a year and does none of them. I guess as a brief update for the company, uh, what happened in the last nine months since my last video? Uh, predominantly work. Um, took on an editor, lasted for probably about six to eight months. Really defined some work hours and that really became productive. Signed quite a few new bigger clients, um, which was really good. And also really focused on, I guess, the learning component of the business. So the how to shoot video Facebook group. But with that came a compromise on personal projects and this vlogging channel, um, which is a bit of a shame. I've just rewatched the video for the end of 2017, beginning of 2018. And look, uh, haven't got as much done as I wanted to, but we have made some good progress. As I say, have signed on some bigger clients, have done a little bit of restructuring, not as much as I wanted to, but yeah, we're, when you work on your own, things take longer. Anyway, that's not the point of this video. This video is actually because I got a Facebook message from somebody who watched one of my really old videos on work-life balance, hi to Pat, and he asked a whole bunch of questions and I thought, look, stop messing around um, and answer some questions and maybe that will kick the, there's no point in lying. I'll try and do videos when I can, but let, anyway. So, Pat says he's a solo operator based in Sydney. He mainly does run and gun stuff. Um, his background is in breaking news. Um, really quick turnaround. He's been freelancing this year, uh, but he's been finding it hard to attract clients. So he was wondering what I did. Uh, so do I go out and actively seek new clients or do they come to me? He says that he finds the idea of approaching new clients daunting. Who doesn't? Um, uh, because it doesn't come to him naturally, totally agree. Um, uh, I have, what does he say here? I have a few regular clients, but not nearly enough to sustain my business. Did it take me long to build up my client base? Okay, cool. Right, let's rattle through this. So, um, do I go out and actively seek new clients or do they come to me? Pretty much all of my business has been people coming to me. I like you, Pat and probably a lot of other people out there. I don't like doing the cheesy sell. Um, I don't like cold calling. Um, I don't really like pushing my business, myself, onto other people. Um, so how do I attract people? Okay, so I do a few things um, and they all, I think, have varying limits of success. So number one, I make sure that I'm using Google AdWords to go out there and advertise myself. Um, so that feedback is really to um, attract people who start searching in Google to um, uh, find a business videographer. So that is really there to drive people into the business. I, in the last, uh, so let me pull back a little bit further. So that has been throughout the entirety of the business. I've always done that. Um, at the same time, I also do Facebook marketing, um, probably about, uh, two and a half-ish, maybe three years ago, I took on a marketing person. Um, I wanted to make sure that I was doing this correctly and decided to invest in the business. So I took a marketing person on. Um, I was probably spending about uh, 8,000 a year on both her and the content, uh, so like boosting the content. Um, after a year, I really felt that I wasn't getting value from this person. I wasn't really seeing um, too much of a drive from the business. And so whoosh, they got the job. From there, um, I then took on doing Facebook advertising myself. Um, and maybe that's part of me just being a bit of a control freak or whatever. But yeah, that's all handled in-house. I do have a schedule. I try and post twice a week. They are on set days. And I do have a schedule which basically determines as we go through the month, each week um, has a different focus. So at the beginning, um, let me check. 
So my general process for setting up my social media schedule was work out what messages I could, uh, what messages I wanted to deliver, um, and I broke these into how often they could be repeated. So for example, a company promo can probably go out once a quarter. You're not gonna push that out on a repetitive basis once a month. Um, from there, I worked out what I could put out on a monthly basis, um, and those tend to be like helpful topics, um, but obviously that would be a um, piece of new content each time. Um, and from there, I then worked out, well, there's probably, there's more gaps, so I work out there's client work as well. So I break it down into a few different sections around basically like, whether it's an example of work, whether it's a product push, so the products, um, each of the packages that I do will get pushed on regular schedule um, and then also client work as well and I decided to do it that way because it's really hard to know when you can push client work out as an example because I'm very much um, waiting for them to release it so that I can release it. Um, has the schedule been successful? Yes and no. Um, yes in that it meant that I was um, I had a plan and it was going out. Um, I do see some dips and declines, especially at the moment. Um, I've been moving house and things like that, so um, I've also had my editor finish up with me. Um, so uh, I've kind of been pulling back a little bit. Um, but I do see that Facebook marketing is important for brand recognition. It's important to constantly be pushing yourself out there um, so that people remember who you are and because they don't always need video, but when they do, they do. So um, that for me, Google effectively does people searching when they want it. Facebook is about me pushing out. Um, also this year I've been doing a monthly newsletter and that goes to an email list that I've built over time. So everyone who contacts me goes back onto the email list, anyone who uh, comes through the website and stuff like that. So basically that newsletter um, allows me to talk about what we've been doing and just reinforce the business and communicate with people that way. So does that cover everything that we do? Pretty much. Obviously I would say that Probably the most important thing would be word of mouth, but unfortunately we don't really get word of mouth referrals because when I'm working business video, it's quite tricky to kind of, um, like when business owners refer, they do refer, but it's infrequent, so I don't rely on that. Um, yeah, it's just a lot of the time, I think for me, the important things are making sure that your website is up to date, real basic stuff, but I see a lot of the time I, I see the reason that I do it is because I think other people don't. But yeah, keeping your website up to date, making sure your SEO is working for you, and making sure you're putting regular content out on your socials that people you know, can get a grasp as to what you do. I do not actively hunt people down. Uh, I've been told off for it, um, but I do not believe in the hard sell, um, and that is the way that I try and present my company. The other piece I tack on here, because you talk around like, um, you talk around uh, whether like the idea of approaching people daunts you and things like that and doesn't come naturally. And I would 100% agree with you. It is not something that's agreeable and like, I don't like it. I don't like it at all. But I think if you've got a product and you think it's useful, contacting people who you, know, you think it's useful to is important. My plan for the next uh, few months, maybe, bearing in mind how long things take to come through, is to um, get out there and market myself and go and hunt down and chase marketing companies. Um, because those guys want video, they want packages, and I'm starting to get more and more inquiries about this, um, but I probably need to make more of an effort to contact people. I think, in all honesty, the easiest way to do that is really through email. Um, it's a very non... Uh, aggressive, uh, people can delete it. I think the bad side to doing that is that it is non-aggressive and people can delete it. Phoning people up is a way better way of networking with people. Um, speaking of networking, have I done networking events? Yes, but I don't like them. I think they're usually rubbish. You normally have to pay a fee, everyone just gets up there, spouts a load of rubbish and all that sort of stuff. Um, I think for me, instead of carpet bombing and just trying to get everyone, I'd rather have a 
uh, planned approach to go and talk to people. So what I mean by that is instead of just cold calling like I do with businesses, so I could just literally cold call. And I did at the beginning, I, I spammed, emailed. Um, you get these entertainment books, they give you vouchers. And I was like, well, these guys are obviously aware of marketing. They'll have budget, I'll contact them. And I spam them and I got like no response over that sort of stuff. But I think um, if you can target your emails, that's that's a good point. And if you see opportunity to talk about your business with other business owners, that can be really, so it's more like pinpoint marketing rather than like widespread. The widespread stuff, that's Google, that's Facebook. Facebook you should try and target, but yeah. Anyway, I'll now move on because I probably waffled way too much. You said that you work with a few regular clients but not nearly enough to with, with, uh, sustain your business. I hear you. Okay, um, my whole plan for 2018, um, one of my KPIs was um, we do regular work with people and I had X number of clients that I wanted to get on board. And in fact, I've lost clients in that ream of work. I think um, it is something that I want to do, but what I have noticed is that as I've worked with more companies, um, they you'll get the low end people. They'll probably come and see you once, and that is probably about it. Um, you know, they may come back to you. I, I've now got guys on a repeat, like I'm now starting to get the people who I first dealt with like four or five years ago coming back through and saying, hey, we want to do more stuff. Those are small guys, they've got a small spend, you know, they want to be like, they, they don't want to do this, they want this stuff to last for as long as possible. But if you don't mess that relationship up, you know that they're going to come back to you because it's just too hard for them to be like, I'll go find someone that they've already dealt with you. So unless you're a complete plank, you've overcharged them or whatever, they're going to come back to you. Uh, the middle tier is an interesting tier. So these guys maybe own a few premises, um, they've got a few people, they're local businesses, they're not national, they're probably not statewide, they're just in your city um, and they're, they're building. These guys, those are the ones that I really thought would latch on to regular content, um, but they haven't. I think the reason for that sort of stuff is because of budget. So they can really see the value, but they can't necessarily have you in every month to shoot stuff. Um, which is a shame because I really like building those relationships. Um, I've had people who've come on board, um, who've done sort of regular work for three months and then they've disappeared. Um, uh, then um, some other guys I've had, um, they, they dip in and dip out, um, which is good because they are coming back, but it's just not as regular as I would like. Um, I guess the advantage, the, the way of looking at that is that you can probably have more people on your books if you can sign more of those people. With the top tier guys, and I, I can't overly speak about this because I've only dealt with a, kind of the fewer brands, um, is really those guys, I think it's about working the relationship. Um, I now think I'm in with a couple of companies who see me as their go-to guy, which is really good, but I've worked hard to under-promise, over-deliver, and um, really try and um, just, just give them. Um, I think as a business, I've tried to cut down on meetings and travel and all this sort of stuff, especially at the lower end, um, because it's just not productive and you don't get paid for it and that sort of stuff. Like the more time you can spend, working here, working on camera, um, that's, where you, that's where you're getting paid. Um, but with the bigger guys, those are the guys who, yes, I'll have a meeting with you without you being signed on. Um, yes, I'll tell you like, I'll spend more time on the phone with you, I'll give you more kind of attention, because one, your spend is bigger, and two, like I want you to be on board within reason. There's a slight caveat to that, which is really that, um, you have to be, I, for me, I am careful about bigger brands because when I looked at website developers, marketers, that sort of stuff, when you put up a big brand, it turned me off because I go, hmm, you're going to charge me a lot because if you work with BMW or McDonald's or whatever, um, those are big brands equals big money. And as a small business, I went, no, I don't want to work with you. I want to work with somebody who's got, you know, Joe's fish and chips and stuff like that, because that's the level I am. So <clears throat> um, I don't think I can sustain my business through always working with the big guys. I think a lot of the time it's about working with the smaller ones. And so I don't want to put them off by working with big brands too much of the time. 
So your final question was, did it take me long to build up a client base? And the answer is, I still don't think I have a client base. I think I'm building a good reputation and I believe that because of the feedback that I get from clients when I work with them and what I deliver because of what I see when work goes out and people comment on it. Um, I think that I have good reputation within the industry and I base that upon when I, we've got a few Facebook forums and stuff like that where the local guys kind of get together and just, uh, kind of talk about projects and things like that. Um, in those forums, when I've posted, people have been like, oh, I've seen your stuff. Or you post something in there and people are like, oh, this is, you know, and you get good feedback. So I think I'm heading in the right direction. Obviously, I know that my company sits within uh, the middle. I'm not shooting uh, cheap and crappy stuff and I don't intend to you know I'm not trying to do this as a student a weekend job or something like that this is a full-time but at the same time I'm not at the other end of the spectrum where I'm shooting on reds and fs fives and you know there's 15 people in my crew and that sort of thing so I sit in this niche and I'm trying to sit as high up as I can obviously from a pricing perspective but uh, yeah I don't yet think I have a client base and it's been four or five years I, I feel more comfortable that people are starting to come around I'm starting to get recognized and that sort of thing but it is always the case I think if you become too uh, settled with one or two clients that could be a problem from an income perspective if they go under or whatever you're too reliant um, I think you, you've always got to be building that sort of stuff so yeah. So hopefully, Pat, that answers your questions. I do appreciate you getting in touch. It's nice that uh, someone wants to do, watches the channel. I know that I should put more videos out and all that sort of stuff, but as a solo operator, <laughs> until I find another editor, um, it's tricky. Uh, you're always trying to balance things. Client work always comes first. Um, I have recently learned that it needs to not come first. I've made a few boo-boos around like tax returns and stuff like that where I really should put myself first. Um, but look, I think uh, as a general note, if you're still not watching this at the end of the video, um, I think like I'm becoming more confident in what I do, who I am, uh, which is a worry when I'm 36 years old, but there we go. Um, but I'm more confident in the business. I'm turning work away to say to like, no, we're not going to do that sort of stuff. No, we're not going to provide the quality. Um, we're starting to look at like minimums for like time and costing. Um, we're turning meetings away, things like that, and, and being more assured in the work processes that we have. Um, and in turn, I think clients respect me more for that. Um, I think as a business, we haven't progressed as far as we should in 2018. Uh, I did buy a whiteboard, if anyone watched the last video and was curious on that cliffhanger. Um, but um, yeah, at the same time, I am one person, um, you know, life goes on and you have to uh, just recognize how far you have come with this sort of stuff. So anyway, as ever, I've probably waffled on way too much in this vlog, um, but I hope it has been of use. I do hope to get more stuff out here. So if you do have a question, motivate me by putting it down below, send me a message, whatever, and I will do as I've done with this video. Um, as ever, I wanna thank you guys for watching, uh, even though these videos are really for me. Oh, and Pat this time. <laughs> uh, and I will see you in the next video.